Ray tracing is generally thought to be this trade-off between visuals and performance. Turning on ray tracing improves the visual quality of a game, providing more realistic lighting effects at the cost of reduced FPS performance. But there's actually a second trade-off that is talked about less, noise. Having now examined a wide variety of ray trace games, this is an issue that keeps cropping up. In some ray trace titles, enabling the feature does improve lighting quality and realism, but the presentation also becomes noticeably more noisy, whether that's grain, sizzling, boiling, or visual effect lag. In this video, I'm going to explore these noise issues across a variety of games, including recent releases, because I think this problem is often glossed over when talking about ray tracing. Game developers need to do a better job of minimizing ray tracing noise in games, and no, NVIDIA's ray reconstruction technology isn't a perfect solution, as we'll show later, but also, hardware needs to get much faster and more capable so that higher resolution, higher ray count effects can be implemented. Ray tracing noise can manifest in many different ways. Some games use low resolution effects. Some games are noisy either in motion or while stationary. Some games are less noisy but take a long time to resolve high resolution effects. And there's the occasional game that has no noise at all. When there is noise, it's especially disappointing when it's visible and obvious even under the most optimal conditions. 4K resolution, native rendering, and the highest in-game settings. For gamers like myself that enjoy a clean, artifact-free presentation and notice issues like noise, this can be a distracting downside to enjoying ray tracing. The worst examples of ray tracing noise are games that simply do not use a high enough resolution for their effects. In these examples, the resolution is so low that temporal cleanup like denoising or TAA is ineffective. Hogwarts Legacy is the most obvious example of this problem, where even ultra ray tracing in the game is extremely noisy. This footage is at native 4K using DLAA, and while enabling ray tracing leads to better reflections in areas that didn't receive them previously, the trade-off is this highly distracting noise that is unstable even when you are completely stationary. And that's despite a 45% reduction to average frame rate compared to not using ray tracing. The developers appear to have pulled back on the resolution of these effects because increasing it further would have led to an even larger performance cost. There are a couple of other examples of this, like Gotham Knights, where ray traced reflections are a clear downgrade in resolution compared to screen space reflections. Not only are these reflections blurry, they're also unstable, and this is using the highest in-game quality at native 4K. And we see quite a bit of noise when enabling the extremely taxing RTX quality setting in Atomic Heart, which either flickers or boils depending on whether we're viewing native 4K or using DLSS quality at 4K. There's no doubting these effects add to the presentation in other ways, but the resolution that's been implemented is insufficient for a pleasant experience. In some titles, this lack of resolution is only apparent in motion, less so when standing still. In Ghostwire Tokyo, for example, the highest ray tracing settings look pretty great while standing still. But if you start moving, some areas can be overwhelmed with noise that you just don't see when not using ray tracing. Of course, screen space reflections have other issues, like reflections completely disappearing when viewed at certain angles as the objects being reflected disappear from the screen space. In this example, you have to decide whether SSR or ray tracing artifacts are worse, I generally think the ray trace game looks better, but it's not like ray tracing improves the image at zero cost to image quality. These effects need to become better and higher resolution. Low resolution ray tracing tends to be the most noticeable noise artifact, but it's not the only type. Surface grain is also present in some titles, where the amount of rays being cast per pixel is low, and the denoising system is not good enough to eliminate this artifact. The result is that in some games, surfaces throughout the world have this sort of noisy, speckled, grainy appearance which can get worse in motion. In Dragon Age The Veil Guard, we get ray traced reflections on a number of surfaces, and it's metallic surfaces which are especially problematic, even using the ultra ray trace settings using 4K with DLSS quality. At times when stationary, and especially in motion, you'll spot a lot of surface noise when ray tracing is enabled. These speckling, grainy artifacts reduce the stability of the image when ray tracing is on, and this is only resolved by turning off the effect. Of course, this is also going to cause a loss of some reflections, but in return, you eliminate noise. The trade-off on water, for example, is that with ray tracing enabled, you get more realistic, higher resolution reflections, but they're noisy on the rippling surface of the water. With that ray tracing enabled, a lot of these artifacts are eliminated, but the non-ray traced reflections are lower resolution and less accurate. 
Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is another more recent example of ray tracing, and this title also suffers from surface noise, particularly when using the full ray tracing setting, aka path tracing. This example is from the game running at 4K using native TAA, which is the least grainy presentation. In this game, even DLAA can be more noisy than native TAA. When looking at this wooden door, for example, there is noticeable surface grain and a lack of image stability when path tracing is enabled compared to disabled, which runs regular ray trace global illumination. Even though path tracing is a noticeable step up in the realism of lighting effects, it takes ray tracing, which is always enabled in this game, to another level, it's a downgrade in image stability relative to less intensive ray tracing effects. At other times, this noise is even more noticeable, like when viewing this shadow. While this shadow is much more realistic and a higher resolution when full ray tracing is enabled on the maximum settings, it simply introduces a significant amount of grain to that area that you don't get with the more basic version of this shadow. Now again, I think the ray traced image looks clearly better overall, but with an enormous performance cost to run this level of path tracing, we just don't have the level of hardware right now that can render this sort of effect without obvious noise. In Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, you'll also find some metallic objects that suffer from surface noise. Here we are comparing hybrid reflections to fully ray traced reflections, and when you crank it up to the maximum RT reflection option, some surfaces become more noisy as they add better ray traced effects. It's not common to see this in Metro Exodus, but it's something I noticed on occasion. Surface noise doesn't always appear in the form of traditional grainy noise though. Some titles implement aggressive noise reduction, but this merely turns grain into a boiling, low-resolution artifact on some surfaces. Dying Light 2 is one example of this, especially in darker environments. With ray tracing enabled, there is an obvious boiling artifact on this elevator door that is unstable and not present with ray tracing disabled. Here we are using the highest quality in-game settings at native 4K. Alan Wake 2 is another example of this boiling effect. Here we are using the high path tracing mode at 4K using DLSS quality with NVIDIA's ray reconstruction enabled. As we move back and forwards in this globally illuminated environment, it's clear that heavy noise reduction is being applied to the ground, creating these blurry, boiling artifacts in addition to obvious ghosting. The best way to describe this is the ground looks soupy, and this effect is not overly responsive, taking multiple frames to resolve, which causes these artifacts when moving around. When disabling path tracing, yeah, you lose a lot of this diffuse lighting, so the overall lighting quality is reduced, and in general I think Alan Wake 2 looks great with path tracing enabled. But the ground is noticeably less noisy in motion without path tracing, though there is still some noise. In other situations in Alan Wake 2, you'll see noise in reflections more clearly. Path tracing improves the accuracy and stationary resolution of these reflections, but when you start moving around, the denoiser, again ray reconstruction in this example, is still not fully equipped to deal with the low sample count. This leads to blur, noise, and flickering in this example. With that said, I did spot other examples where the quality of reflections is abysmal with path tracing turned off, so in some areas path tracing will remove artifacts, in other areas it will add them. Star Wars Outlaws suffers from boiling artifacts too, and this is regardless of whether we use ray reconstruction or not. There were many areas in the game where I found surface artifacts, particularly on shinier objects, and this could be the case either stationary or in motion. This can give some surfaces this soupy, low-resolution, highly denoised appearance, which is quite ugly in my opinion, especially given here we are playing at 4K Ultra using DLSS quality. There were even occasions where I noticed ray reconstruction would just cause weird surface artifacts, like on the bottom of this table. It's noisy, there are weird artifacts on the left side in the shadowy area, and when we use the photo mode to zoom in on this element, we can clearly see the surface texture is being reconstructed incorrectly in that more wide-angle shot. For mirror reflections like this polished floor, Star Wars Outlaws has a different set of artifacts you can choose from. Without ray reconstruction, these reflections are noisy in motion and blurry while stationary, which is pretty distracting. With ray reconstruction on, these reflections are a much higher quality while standing still, but there's a noticeable loss of quality in motion. The sample count is still too low for this type of denoising, so the surface becomes very blurry. If you pause, after about a second, the full resolution resolves and everything looks nice, but when you're jogging around, the denoiser simply can't keep up, and this creates a disconnect between the general resolution of the game world and the resolution of these reflections. 
At times, the attempts to denoise a game with ray tracing can lead to a loss of texture detail. We saw a bit of that in some of the Star Wars Outlaws examples, but it's even more pronounced in Cyberpunk 2077 when path tracing and ray reconstruction are enabled using DLSS quality at 4K. Now this game does also have issues mentioned previously. Some diffuse reflections have a boiling effect in motion, mirror reflections noticeably reduce in resolution when moving, but in addition there's this texture quality problem. On this polished street surface, the reflections are supposed to be a bit diffuse, so they're not going to be a crisp high resolution like in the previous example. But like with Outlaws, in this configuration it takes a brief moment for the full quality of the ray tracing effects to resolve, so when moving around this creates a soupy, lower resolution surface. In particular, texture quality is lost, and you can see some of that texture quality resolve in the second after you stop moving. It's almost like the texture is loading in after you become stationary, but this is actually the denoiser figuring out whether the texture applied on top of the path traced reflection is a real part of the texture or just noise. To prove these textures should be there, we can zoom in and take a close look at the surface where you'll see a lot of obvious surface defects from the texture that's being applied. When we move, we can see this detail being lost briefly, and clearly with a wider camera angle, not in the photo mode, this issue is worse. I also noticed this problem in Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which is generally on the better end of games when it comes to ray tracing noise. But with the game using max settings and DLAA at 4K, the quality of surface textures is reduced when ray tracing is enabled. In this example, ray tracing adds reflections that weren't there previously, which improves the accuracy of reflections and adds to the scene's realism, but this causes a loss in surface detail, and the resolution of these reflections appears lower than the rest of the game world as a result. This is especially obvious when panning the camera slowly. The non-ray traced image retains a lot of that fine texture detail on the metal surface on the ground, but the ray traced image simply looks blurrier. The final noise artifact I want to talk about is ray tracing denoiser lag. This occurs when the number of rays per pixel is so low that to get a high quality output image, the denoiser has to accumulate samples over many frames. In some situations, this accumulation occurs over so many frames that it stretches out to the point where in-game motion can cause the output to lag real-time movements. This causes a wobble in ray traced effects where, for example, a reflection can lag the actual position of the reflected object by a noticeable amount. Or it can cause a situation where ray traced lighting slowly resolves over a second or two, rather than resolving instantly like real life or the non ray traced mode. Control is the perfect example of this. There is a noticeable lag to ray traced reflections in this game, even playing at native 4K using the highest settings. When moving around the game world, this can make reflections wobble when making sudden movements, and this effect is clearly not as responsive as it should be. Any sort of disconnect between the normal game world and ray traced effects like this can be especially distracting. Now there is also a small amount of lag to the game's non ray traced reflections, but it's much worse and much less responsive when ray tracing is enabled, even though in both situations we are capped to the same 60 FPS. This was also true with the previous Alan Wake 2 example, where we looked at how quickly the path tracing effects resolve. These diffuse reflections and elements to the global illumination system are a bit laggy in how they are rendered, it's not overly responsive, and again this creates a form of visual noise. Indiana Jones suffers from this too when using path tracing. In this hallway example, the game's path trace lighting is clearly more realistic, and the way global illumination is implemented creates a better looking image. But when you move around, there's an obvious lag and wobble to some aspects of this illumination, along with movement creating more noise in the diffuse reflections. The slowness of these effects, the lack of responsiveness, can make the game feel like it's rendering more slowly than it actually is, because it's accumulating over way too many frames. But if this level of accumulation wasn't being done, I'm betting a whole bunch of noise and grain would take its place. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see this artifact in a different way. For example, when we pan the camera around, it takes a little while for the global illumination system to fully resolve into the final output quality. This makes it look like the lighting is slowly loading in over time, rather than instantly responding to camera changes, which is more natural and how the game works without path tracing enabled. Again, not using ray tracing looks noticeably worse in the accuracy and realism of the lighting system, plus we get screen space reflection artifacts, 
but the responsiveness is much better and the lack of noise is noticeable in comparison. So essentially, this is the ray tracing noise problem. As we're moving to this more accurate, more realistic, better looking lighting system in modern games, we're sacrificing image clarity, detail, and image stability. And that's on top of the performance cost, which reduces the frame rate and potentially requires the use of other technologies like upscaling and frame generation, which themselves add more artifacts and noise into the mix. This is a byproduct of current hardware being insufficiently powerful for ray tracing. Developers have had to significantly cut back on the quality of ray traced effects, lowering the amount of rays or samples per pixel just to get ray tracing running on current generation GPUs. The gaps are then filled in through denoises, which have their own set of compromises and issues, even supposedly leading edge solutions like Nvidia's ray reconstruction. The end result is an image that is real-time ray traced, but is also noisy. The clear solution to this problem is doing more ray tracing. More rays per pixel, more samples, less denoising. Across everything we've seen from ray tracing in games so far, it's always the games that do more that look better. More ray traced lighting across a broader range of effects makes games look more realistic. A higher sample count leads to better quality effects at a higher resolution with fewer artifacts. But all of this costs performance that in a lot of cases we just don't have with modern hardware. Even the GeForce RTX 4090 struggled to render some of these examples at decent frame rates, especially the titles using path tracing, and that's with current levels of in-game noise. The other option is to improve the quality of the denoises, but that's easier said than done, especially when we're talking about extremely low resolution effects. We know, for example, that upscaling is generally useless when the input resolution is so low that the algorithm just doesn't have an adequate number of samples to work with. Well, the same is true for denoises. I think this is important to remember when discussing ray tracing as we soon enter a new generation of GPUs. Ray tracing isn't always a universal image quality improvement, and there's plenty of work still to be done to bring this technology up to a really good standard. That's especially true if we want ray tracing to become a reality for mid-range hardware, because all of the issues I've been talking about in this video get worse at lower resolutions, at lower ray tracing quality settings, and with more upscaling applied. Hopefully, we see a decent bump to graphics card performance and value across the board because that's really what's going to usher in a future of high quality ray tracing in games. So anyway, that's it for this look at noise in ray trace games, something that has been annoying me a little bit as I've continued to play more and more ray trace games as I go through my backlog of single player titles and also from analyzing a whole bunch of ray tracing games that are available right now. I think that noise is one of those issues that is kind of getting swept under the rug a little bit. So hopefully we'll see some improvements to this in future games when we get more powerful GPUs. If you do appreciate the independent analysis and testing that we do here at Hardware Unbox, then please do consider supporting us via Patreon. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to some pretty cool benefits like our Discord community, which is a great place to chat about the latest in PC hardware. We've also got our behind the scenes content, monthly live streams, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.